Now I'm going to do a quick test render. And as you can see, our scene looks rather blue and a little dark. So just real quick, I'm going to grab all of these lights by left-click dragging to the right of the, their names here in the uh, Instances tab. And let me just turn the brightness up to, uh, let's say, 41%. I'll probably have to change that again when I get closer to the final render, but for now, that's good enough. So the next thing on our list here is indirect light. Now, basically what the indirect light is going to accomplish is it's going to simulate light from the sky, light from the sun, hitting the pavement here and reflecting back onto the buildings. So again, I'm going to start by adding a distant light to the scene. <clears throat> and I'm going to call this IDL. And I'm going to rotate it so it's pointing straight up, 180 degrees about its x-axis. Again, it doesn't matter where these lights go. I'm just doing this for my own personal thing. Now, the color of the pavement is this kind of muted brownish grayish color. And the indirect light is actually going to need to pick up that color. So I'm going to take this and give it a bit of a muted grayish brown color so that ought to work. Again, let's cheat on the shadows, turn them down to about 15%. And I'll take the brightness way down to, let's say, like 11% to start. Now, at this point, this light is going to do absolutely nothing because it's going to be coming up from the bottom of the scene, hitting the bottom of this ground object here, and not hitting anything else. And this is where the genius of stonemason comes into play. Over here, where it says restrict lighting to make sure that all objects except is checked, and on the add remove tab here, I'm going to pick uh, Urban Base is what it's called. <clears throat> Whatever scene you're working with, you know, if you have a train, for example, same concept applies. Just make sure that your indirect lights aren't, aren't hitting whatever you're using for a ground. <clears throat> so now that that's done, same concept as before. I need to make a bunch of copies of this because the indirect light needs to be coming from all directions, only this time at an upward angle. So control D to make a copy. Get this guy going to the left. Make another copy to the right. Isn't this fun? Make another copy. Get this guy going towards the front of the scene. And one more going to the back of the scene. Do another quick test render, see where we're at here. And right away, I can see a lot more contrast in the scene. This little tunnel walkway thing here, I'm seeing some light inside of that that wasn't there before. Under real-world lighting conditions, you're not going to get these completely blacked-out areas that you can get in 3D. And adding these indirect lights gets us around that. So finally now, on to the primary light in the scene, the sun. Again, I'm going to go with a distant light. I'm going to move this guy up here just for my own personal thing. I know I keep saying that, but it doesn't matter where this light goes. I'll rename this Sun. And I'll take the color and make it a pale yellow. You don't want to go too rich with the color. It's going to look fake. And let's make this 200% for the brightness. For the moment, I'm going to leave the, uh, the shadows alone. And I'm going to rotate this guy around so I get a nice dramatic lighting effect. I want it down to the left and maybe towards the front of the scene a little bit. And once more with the test render. And I can see right now uh, this is already starting to look like something here. And that's pretty cool. Uh, a couple quick changes and I think I'm good to go here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to move up to 250. And for the shadows, oops, under the effects tab, I'm going to enable soft shadow, <coughs> soft shadows. Man, I got to quit smoking. <laughs> and I'm going to go with the uh, light radius of 25 feet. For sunlight on a clear day, you want very crisp, clear shadows. You don't want them to be too blurry. And Career's default settings are actually too crisp and they look a little bit fake. Again, I'm going to grab my skylights under the general tab, and I'm going to brighten up this shade of blue just a touch. 
go back to the rendering room, crank up my settings, go with good anti-aliasing, good object accuracy, shadow accuracy, I'll drop down to one pixel, and I'll max out the uh, filter sharpness and ray depth, and let's say 800 pixels for our final size here, and we render away. <clears throat> and I don't know if you can see this from here, but I'm getting a lot of nice shadows from the catwalks. And uh, even the water tower here is casting a nice shadow against the, uh, against the building. And it looks pretty cool. And because I used my blue skylights, the shadows created by the sunlight, if this makes any sense, are actually uh, picking up a little bit of that color and they're slightly tinted blue which again is something that you would find in the real world and that's kinda what we're going for here and you'll have to forgive me because this is a slow computer it's an old gateway that my wife usually uses and I got the capture software running and I'm watching Tomb Raider at the same time and we are just about done here so there you have it rendering time was 57 seconds and this looks pretty darn good for for being under a minute and like I said you can uh, do a lot with this skill you can mess around with the position of the sunlight and its color to create a different time of day like night or evening or morning and this is much lighter on resources you can throw quite a few Vickies and Michaels in here if you want and there you have it fake GI and Carrera pretty cool stuff at least I think so so again, if you have any questions, drop me a line at renderosity.com under the name of JT411. My name is Jim T-Shirt, and thanks for watching this tutorial.